Today, we're installing classic versions of macOS 9 and macOS 10 on a modern iPad, totally free and without any jailbreaking or sideloading. And it's actually a lot better of an experience than you might expect. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy revisiting the glory days of home computing, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. In a previous video, we explored sideloading emulators like Mini VMac through a magical app store called the Alt Store. That video was just as much about how cool the Alt Store is as it was about Mini VMac itself. But what if you're not into sideloading things? What if your desire to run cool old versions of the Mac OS is limited by your devotion to Big Daddy Cook's impenetrable walled garden? Well, today is for you, my friend, because we're using a magical app called UTMSE, which is freely available in the Apple App Store, to install multiple versions of classic Macintosh operating systems here on my beloved iPad Air. I thought this would be a good video to make because it actually took me a bit of trial and error to get everything working on here, and I bet a lot of you could have a lot of fun playing around with a vintage Mac that lives entirely within a modern iPad or even an iPhone. And while you can find copies of macOS installers basically all over the internet, I thought it would be fun to really do things the right way and install using my original install media that I physically own. So UTM is available for free in the App Store. It's called UTMSE here. There's actually a full-fledged UTM that we can sideload on here, which has a couple advantages, but we're not gonna worry about that today. We're gonna see how well macOS performs on UTMSE itself. UTM is based on the QEMU backend, which of course we've had a lot of fun with in the past, just on its own but UTM puts it into a nice wrapper that's very easy to use. So we're gonna create a new virtual machine and we need to get an image to boot this off of. I'm gonna make an ISO image of my real physical install media that we should then be able to boot up in UTM and install from. Yeah, we're doing things 100% above board today. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Paperlike for iPad. Paperlike is the original paper feel screen protector. Not only does it reduce glare, which is quite useful for me here trying to film my iPad, but the real magic is in the nano dot. The Paperlike screen protector has an incredibly pleasant texture designed to give you just the right resistance feel and haptic feedback when you're drawing or writing on your iPad with something like the Apple Pencil. The proprietary nano dots are tiny microbeads engineered to really feel like paper giving you better precision when you're sketching or writing. You'll be really surprised at the extra dimension that just that little bit of resistance can add to the experience. Shading something in feels like shading something in. And on top of that, hey, screen is protected. If you're gonna get a screen protector anyway, why not get one that adds dual functionality, anti-glare and nano dot haptic pencil feedback? There's a 100 day satisfaction guarantee. So join millions of creators, artists, and iPad power users and check out the Paperlike 2.1. Link down in my description below. All right, I've got the Mac OS X DVD in an external DVD ROM drive. We do disk util list. There it is, disk five. So we will use the magic of DD and we'll just create tiger.iso. And success, just airdrop that right onto the iPad. All right, so let's set up the virtual machine here. We're going to use the ISO image we just airdropped over. We're gonna select legacy hardware, and then we're gonna change this to architecture power PC, and then importantly, the Mac 99 based power Mac option here for system and CPU cores, I'm gonna hit the minus button, make sure that says one, All right? Eight gigabyte drive, no shared directory. We'll just call this Tiger. Oh, look at that. We are actually booting from this. <laughs> okay, I have a crazy idea. Hang on a sec. Let's see if we can hook up an actual iMac keyboard and mouse. Yeah, I've got a USB-C adapter here. Plug it into the iPad. Oh my God, it works. Look at that. 
It's like I'm on a real Mac. All right, let's do an install. Let's see, disk utility. There's our virtual hard drive. Let's just make a Mac OS partition on here. Well, using the keyboard and mouse is fantastic. <laughs> There's our newly partitioned drive. Install. Okay, install complete. Just need to remove the CD from the optical drive. I'm also gonna go into settings and swap around the two IDE drives. So the virtual hard drive is first. Let's boot this thing up. Okay, well, this has been stuck on the loading spinner for quite a while, so I am going to shut this down and then try booting it up again. Oh yeah, it's booting up, look at that. <laughs> yes, good old Mac OS 10.4 Tiger. All right, first thing we need to do, as always, is set up our dock to my personal preference. It is taking an awful long time to open up system preferences. Personally, I'm a big fan of Smaller dock with magnification turned on. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, frame rate's not great. <laughs> I wonder if we're online. We do not appear to be connected. We'll mess around more with that in a little bit. But first, I have one more operating system I want to try to install on here. Same as before, I'm going to pop the CD into my USB DVD RW drive. We'll do a quick disk util list. Yeah, there it is, dev disk 5. So we'll do sudo dd input file equals dev disk 5. Output file equals macOS 9.iso. We'll let that spin up for a bit. And same as before, we'll stick this into UTMSE and see if we can install macOS 9. And jump cut to check it out. We have macOS 9.2 on here installed and booting. According to Apple System Profiler, we are a 900 megahertz PowerPC G4, which is a PowerMac G4 AGP graphics. And uh, it's actually quite responsive. Now I do wanna do a little bit of gaming on here, of course. So what I'm gonna do is load Wolfenstein 3D disk images I've added two IDE CD-ROM drives, Wolfenstein 3D disk images, that is floppy disk images. It'll mount those just fine. Oh yeah, let's see how Wolfenstein 3D runs on this thing. I hope it's playable. Oh, it runs great. Ooh, that is buttery smooth. All right. Well, unfortunately, I cannot figure out sound that works. The only sound card this will boot with is emulated audio card Screamer, but it says this audio card is not supported. But if I select any other of these audio devices, well, I'll show you. Yep, crashes. All right, I'd like to see if we can get networking to work under Mac OS X here. Yeah, so the default card is this E1000E, but I will trial and error my way through all of these cards and hopefully stop at one that works so that you don't have to do that. And success, check it out. We are on the internet. We have an IP address at least. Oh yeah, we're online, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> the winning option was Intel Gigabit Ethernet E1000, which is the third option here. So I actually didn't have to dig that deep to get a working one. Oh, look at that. The old update servers are still online. We are going to update this 20 year old operating system, which is running on an iPad. That is ridiculous. Well, I'm sure that's going to take literally forever. So we'll just, uh, let this do what it has to do. And there we go, updated to Mac OS 10.4.11 using Apple's official repositories, which somehow are still online. Oh, that is absolutely wild. Okay, addendums and caveats. First, you don't actually need to hook up a USB keyboard. I was just doing this to be silly. 
UTM has built-in mouse control and touch and a keyboard. Of course, a big caveat here is speed. You might have noticed that Mac OS X is a bit laggy, although Mac OS 9 works great, and that's because this is UTM SE. There's a more powerful version of UTM that utilizes JIT, which you can sideload using that alt store that we checked out in a previous video. But by default, Apple does not allow just-in-time compiling in apps that they distribute through the App Store. But I've played around with that a little bit and it's very finicky to get going because you have to enable just-in-time compiling through the alt store. I mean, it works and it's totally doable and a lot of fun, but this just works. But I bet we could install a lot of other operating systems on here like BOS for PowerPC, Intel-based Mac OS, you could really go nuts with this, all within the confines of your iOS device. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird anachronistic stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.